Chapter 2-4, The Evolution of Memory. German physicist and philosopher Bernd Olaf Kuppers explains, The problem of the origin of life is clearly basically equivalent to the problem of the origin of biological information. Throughout the history of the human race, there is a feature that singles out our civilization among other living matters. That is, our zeal for memory storage. The habit of keeping various records of past events and experiences is traced back several millenniums. The amount of information, as well as the existence of an adequate means for efficient depository and safekeeping of information, is one of the main distinctions of the humankind. For centuries, fathers and mothers passed on their experiences to children verbally. After a while, they realized the unreliability of this method. Words were forgotten, distorted, misinterpreted. The owners of valuable information died and their achievements disappeared forever. Humans began to look for more reliable carriers, such that they would be stored for a long time, keep a clear idea of the accumulated data, and allow minimal distortion of the data. As the saying goes, the palest ink is better than the sharpest memory. The first long-term carriers of information were stones. These storage facilities served well, and some of them still exist, but it was difficult to carry them as a tribe of nomads move through space. The Sumerians made a clever breakthrough in this area. They invented clay tablets and a compact information transmission system, cuneiform writing. Cuneiform characters were imprinted on a wet clay tablet with a stylus, often made of reed. Once written, the tablets were treated in hot kilns, making them hard and durable. Gradually, a new problem emerged. The amount of information grew rapidly, since there was a need to store royal decrees, historical chronicles, religious texts. Tablet numbers grew and required increasing space to save the entire flow of information. Therefore, just just in a couple of millennia after the appearance of cuneiform, Egyptians invented better information storage technique, the papyrus. This material was light and could contain incomparably more information than imperfect cuneiform writing. Greeks, in the 2nd century BC, began to use parchment. Unlike papyrus, the parchment did not darken, did not dry out, crack, and allowed multiple use. You too, when are tired of music on your flash drive, or the old text needs to be improved, erase it and record a new one. Quite often, our own offspring erases his father's doctoral thesis from his disc and records a new album of the popular band. Parchments were still expensive. Therefore, the Chinese, less than in a hundred years, came up with a paper. They did not invent it, but copied it from a more advanced civilization. Inhabitants of the Celestial Empire are known as good copiers, aren't they? Someone, Sao Lun, Chinese eunuch, inventor, and politician of the Han Dynasty, undertook the search for a method of manufacturing a material for the application of signs that would be less expensive and more technological than the existing ones. The search led him to the wasps. The thin but sturdy material from which the wasps' nests were made was most suited to what he was looking for. Dead wood and plant fibers serve as a material for the construction. Cellulose-rich raw material was thoroughly chewed and moistened with adhesive protein-rich saliva. Wasp saliva, in addition to wetting, gives the fiber water-repellent properties. That led to the invention of light, firm, and sufficiently strong paper. It was a real breakthrough. The paper became so accessible that the Chinese began to use it as a toilet paper and even print on it all sorts of nonsense. For example, the banknotes. Anyway, the paper as a carrier of information was superior to the then available wax tablets, lead sheets, and even a birch bark. This carrier allowed to collect huge amounts of information. According to legend, the Library of Alexandria kept up to 700,000 scrolls. Gradually, with the appearance of printed books, their number number began to grow and take up increasingly more space. The amount of information, meanwhile, did not shrink. On the contrary, it continued to grow. But this was only part of the problem. The second part was the ease of use. In order to find the right document, quote, photo, you had to go to the other end of the city, and even in another city, rummage through catalogs, wait for the ordered book, and manually copy the necessary texts. Finally, new carriers appeared. First, there were magnetic, and then semiconductor information stores. It became possible to store a large volume in small and easily accessible devices. Personal computers made it even easier to use. Search by keywords, copying and recording now takes seconds instead of hours. I do remember the first personal computer appeared in our Institute of the Academy of Sciences of the Ukraine. The term personal meant that time one computer for ten persons. It contained a monstrous memory amount. We were perplexed. Who would need that much? Ten megabytes. It was unheard of. Today, 
I carry a 32 gigabyte flash drive in my pocket and consider replacing it with 64 gigabytes. On the global scale, things are much more dramatic. Humanity produces information at an increasing rate. The memory accumulated in previous years does not disappear. It adds up to the new data. The accumulated information is growing so rapidly that by 2040, there may not be enough material on the planet to save it. We need new storing technology, fundamentally new one. Such the technology exists, luckily. A good hard drive can store 64 gigabytes of information, while one gram of DNA up to 700 terabytes. This is 100,000 times more than a half kilogram disk can keep. I talked with scientists from the University of Washington and Microsoft, which are developing such technology. They are sure that DNA memory storages will be available in 5 to 10 years. One would object. This is a nonsense. How can a strong and temperature-resistant silicon be compared with some frivolous deoxyribonucleic acid? I also thought so, but what I was told and demonstrated completely refuted my Philistine opinion. Information recorded on DNA can be preserved for centuries, unlike the data on your hard disk. The latter will begin to disappear in 5 to 10 years. And what will become of DNA? It is all written down with amino acid molecules. Scientists dug out the carcasses of mammoths 60,000 years old and restore their genetic code. DNA memory consumes about 100 million times less energy than a flash drive. Currently, this is not true for a living active DNA, but to dry DNA for better preservation. Therefore, the speed of recording and reading information on DNA is 100 times and even 1,000 times slower than from conventional memory devices. This issue will be resolved, no doubt. We need it. Let us not forget that the recursive function is inexorable. No matter how advanced is our technological progress, the growing needs for a memory storage will surpass its possibilities very soon.